Hey, Plumber Tom here. If you're like me, you like to drink clean, filtered water, and nothing's better than water from a reverse osmosis filtration system. These do require maintenance, so let's have a look at what does it take to replace the cartridges and membrane on a reverse osmosis filtration system. You might find your system under your kitchen sink in the kitchen cabinets. I like to keep mine in the basement where I have it a little more accessible. You'll want to start by getting a cartridge filter pack that is compatible with the system you have. If you stick with the same manufacturer, that's the best way. Sometimes they're interchangeable. When you're ready to get started, locate the shutoff valve for the reverse osmosis system and turn that off. There's another valve on the inlet. I always turn that one off as well. And there's a valve on the tank. If you'll shut off the one on the tank, you'll keep all the pressure inside of there. That way you don't have to drain down the whole tank. Now you can open the faucet and let the rest of the pressure out and your system should be drained down to where you can start working on the filters. Most reverse osmosis systems are actually a series of filters, the membrane being the most important one, it does all of the thorough cleaning. But to protect the membrane and help it last longer, there are a series of pre-filters and this is usually what needs to be changed. If you'll do those annually, then that helps the membrane to last and it can last up to 10 years. This particular system has an additional carbon filter after the membrane so it is a very thorough five-stage system. The filters are housed in compartments or canisters, and so we remove those to access the filters. Generally, I'll use a pipe wrench if it's a little snug, but most of the time these can be done by hand. You will want to make sure to have a bucket to catch the water and the filters as they come out of the canisters. Now, this filter is the first one that the water passes through. It is a sediment filter, and it's mainly going to catch the largest particles. You can see it has very much discolored as we examine it against a new one. You can tell that this is doing its job. We're collecting quite a bit of sediment from the water before it passes into the rest of the filtration system. To install these, we simply reinsert the filter into these canisters and thread them on by hand. There's an O-ring at the top that seals them. These next two filters are carbon filters, which will remove particles that are smaller and smaller as the water passes from one to the next. Now this way we've pretty thoroughly cleaned the water even before it gets to the membrane. On a typical filter replacement, that's about all you need to do is the three pre-filters, but let's go through and replace the membrane in this one. Before removing the membrane, I had to disconnect uh, the water line that's connected to that right side of the membrane chamber. Once I have the membrane in place, I'm also going to replace the post-membrane carbon filter. That's the one on top. So this particular unit has a five-stage filtration process. The three pre-filters, and those are the ones, again, that you want to do more often. And then that goes through the membrane and then into this carbon filter. Now this one just kind of threads on, and you can see I'm replacing it. It does have to go in a certain direction of flow through this filter. So I want to make sure to put that in properly, but these are just Plastic threaded fittings, usually on plastic, they seal up pretty good. You could put some tape on them, Teflon tape, but you know, this is usually good enough. Now with the tubing, I'm going to snip off the end so I have a good clean connection. With push-on fittings, you want to make sure to watch those because they tend to leak. And then I like to write the date that I did the service right on the unit. From here, we'll turn things back on. I've got the uh, tank opened up again. I'm just checking for leaks. That tank had some pressure, so that's going to pressurize all the filters. I'm going to open up the valves that feed the reverse osmosis unit and once again keep an eye on everything for leaks especially if this is in a kitchen cabinet you don't want any of those leaks to go undetected it could do a lot of damage so make sure to look it over real good I'm going to go up to the faucet and purge you'll notice there's going to be some black carbon um, coming through there that's just some of the normal dust that's with the filter there it is and I want to give that plenty of time to purge. So I'm going to drain down the entire tank. That means just leave the faucet running until the pressure disappears. And I'll do that two or three times. By then, it should be ready for use. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe.